Hi, my name is Isha Shah, and today I want you all to imagine that you have mud all over your face and your clothes are completely mismatched. At what point in your life do you think you would have cared if you looked like this? Were you a toddler, a teenager, or adult? When we are children, we don't care about our self-image. We could have mud all over our face with mismatched clothes, and we could care less as to what other people thought. But as soon as someone makes a remark about our appearance, especially weight, is when we start becoming more self-conscious. As recent as kindergarten, children start to compare their physical appearance to others because of family members, friends, or something that was seen on TV. The first time I can recall an instance similar to this was when I was five years old. My family had come over and I always loved eating the food my grandfather would cook, especially his homemade pizza fresh out of the oven. But when my family came over, they would tell me how skinny I looked or how I would need to eat more because of how skinny I am. They made these remarks about my weight and how it was because I was born premature, which made me even more conscious about my weight. Other times, I would hear my family members whispering about cousins, saying that they looked healthy, implying that they were bigger. The things that they had said made me angry and questioned how someone could judge someone else based on weight, but could I even blame them for the comments that they were making? I knew that they had good intentions, and in my family members' minds, they saw these comments as a way to show their affection and love because comments and remarks like these had become so normalized. I started noticing these jabs more often as I started growing up. And in sixth grade, I had started to question my own appearance and become more conscious of myself and my body image. Every day, I would wear jeans and a baggy sweatshirt I even wore long sleeve bathing suits and swim trunks. Basically, I wore just about anything to cover up my body because I didn't like how I looked or thought that I was going to be judged for my appearance. I wanted a change, but I didn't know how. In seventh grade, I decided that I was going to start going to the gym with my dad every day at 5.30 in the morning. I wanted to look a certain way in order to boost my self-confidence. And I had all these expectations of what a woman's body is supposed to look like. And this was partially because of social media. The ideal image of what a woman is supposed to look like is having a flat tummy, skinny thighs, and an hourglass figure. A lot of people can agree that social media influences our expectations. But the truth is that these expectations come from far more than just our phones. They are all around us, like going to the gym or walking through the mall. When I walked through the mall and saw the models, I always thought I wanted to look just like them. I went to the gym every day with that image in my mind. And this thought of looking a certain way had become an obsession. I would make sure I was eating all the right foods and doing the proper amount of weightlifting and cardio in order to look a certain way. I went to the gym every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and there were even some days where I would double my workout and participate in Taekwondo classes Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. By the end of seventh grade, I had started seeing results. I had looked skinnier and thought I looked the right way. Because of this, I had started to get out of my comfort zone. I started to feel comfortable in sports bras, spandex, and even bikinis. And the results I had been seeking were there. But I had been even further from my goal than ever before. I wanted to look and feel a certain way, but not for myself. I was doing this to lessen the comments of looking too skinny or looking healthy. And because of this, my confidence continued to plummet, and then I ended up becoming even more self-conscious. The truth is that I would never get to where I wanted because of one thing that I had ignored, my mindset. 
My freshman year, my friends had succeeded in convincing me to wrestle. And though I'd started just for fun, as I started doing more research about the sport, I realized that I could be slim and still get physical exercise in. Now, we can all assume that this is where things magically get better, right? Well, not entirely. With the help of my coaches, I started properly weight training and eating the right foods in order to get stronger. Yet I was mentally struggling to make the connection that in order to feel fit, I must think and see myself as fit. The first time I wore a singlet, it felt wrong. I didn't feel like a wrestler and it was because I didn't look like a wrestler. The expectation of what a wrestler looks like is bulky and muscular. What I had wanted before, a flat stomach and looking slim, was not the same as what I wanted now. I now wanted to look bulky and muscular, but I was short and skinny and it didn't help that I was the only female on my team. I kept losing matches and I constantly blamed it on everything else. My technique was bad, I wasn't as strong as the boys. I even once said it was my own fault for being under my weight class. But the major reason was because every, I assumed that everyone was judging me based on my appearance, that I was unable to succeed within the sport. At the end of freshman season, I decided to stop caring what others thought. Did it really matter how I looked in my singlet? I had been uncomfortable in it for so long, but why? When I thought through all these things, I decided that I was going to wrestle for me and I was going to wear my singlet with confidence. Now, I want you all to think WWF and The Rock running into that ring ready to go. I felt that exact same way walking into that ring. In my head, I had a whole entry going on with fog machines going off and started from the bottom by Drake playing as I walked on that mat. My coach gave me that look that I was ready, and that day I had my very first win. Looking back to that video, it wasn't the most gracious pin ever, but it felt like the start of my comeback, and I walked off that mat feeling so confident myself, and I hadn't felt that way in years. It wasn't just in a day that my mindset completely switched, but that victory had led to my personal journey of self-growth. I made a row of colorful index cards with quotes of self-love that I put up on my mirror. And I read those index cards every day while brushing my teeth, reminding me that I can do anything no matter what. A year went by and I had become more confident in myself and my body image. I wasn't trying to look a certain way for others. I was wrestling better, lifting heavier, and eating smarter because I believed that I could achieve anything and I didn't need anyone's approval in order to feel or look a certain way. After wrestling season sophomore year, I knew I hadn't done my absolute best over the season. So I started doing more research on nutrition, lifting and bulking. And when I thought about this idea of bulking, it meant eating proteins and carbs. But a lot of people thought I just wanted to have extremely large muscles because this term is associated with men. People kept correcting me and telling me that I needed to be toned because a lot of people associated the term toned with women. Regardless of what others had said, I started bulking up for myself and my journey of eating all the right foods, working out several days a week and taking rest days when needed were all things that helped me achieve how I wanted to look and feel and I didn't care what anyone else thought about me and my appearance. And with this newfound confidence, I started my YouTube channel, Shaw Strength, to inspire others to be confident in themselves, but also take 10 to 15 minutes out of the day to stay active. Body confidence is a lifelong journey and bodies change as you continue to grow. And you may not like how you always look, but you can still be confident in yourself with a positive mindset. People will continue to make comments about others' weight, but that won't ever change unless we address it. My own family members at times 
continue to make these remarks. And as I've gotten older, I have said things back to them, letting them know that these comments of being healthy or too skinny can be demeaning and can be hurtful to others. They're finally learning this as it is addressed more often. It is humane to feel insecure and completely normal to have insecurities, but we shouldn't let, us, let it affect us as much and continue to remember our perfections. And as Selena Gomez once says, who says you're not perfect? <laughs>